Hi, David Vizard here. And you are watching Power Tech 10. Today's subject is connecting rods, or to be more precise, connecting rods and how to balance them, and the pistons. Before getting into our super cheap Harbor Freight component sourced rod balancer, I want to show you this here. This came from Conk Cams. And I'd like to see how many of you can guess what it is, but I'll slowly put this together whilst we're going through other things. Normally, having your rods and pistons balanced is a job done at the machine shop. And it costs money, especially when that is added to the crankshaft and you can balance your own connecting rods at home. First part assembled to second part. The problem with balancing connecting rods is that it's not a simple job. You just don't plonk it on a set of scales and there you go. You've got to get the pin ends all the same weight and the rod ends, the, the, the journal ends. Now, at a machine shop, they'll have a, a machine, a set of scales, especially for balancing connecting rods. And it's an expensive machine. Probably could run into four figures. It balances, it weighs the little end, the pin end, and the rod end. Well, third part assembled to first part. We can build a precision rod balancer for about $15. But why is it so important? Or why am I putting importance on the need to do this rod balancing, right? It's tied in with connecting rod and piston weight and why we need to minimize it. Main shaft assembled to body. The key to our rod balancer is this uh, very low cost uh, gram scale. Uh, I believe I got this from Harbor Freight, but it might have been Office Depot. I can't remember. I think it was about $11.90, so it wasn't very expensive. But, so that's the first thing you need. Next, you need to get a piece of 3 sixteenths. Well, you could do it with maybe slightly thinner, but about 3 sixteenths mild steel bar and bend it in this shape here. And then drill a small hole in the top here to put a cotton hanger through. Right, so that's the bit you have to make yourself. Lastly, you need a stand like this here and see if you can see all of that. But that's a matter of convenience, right? Thrust washer positioned. A few points concerning this adapter, right? It needs to be made with something fairly stout. And this here needs to come through about the center of gravity of the piece about here. Right, so when you put the rod on, you put it directly under there, and it's suspended vertically under the cotton. Now, if you check to see that this is working, look at the cotton there, and then check that it's vertical this, in this direction as well. Securing nut attached. Next, 
Next, hang the hook like so. Right? Now, when we turn that around, it'll be in the right orientation for us to put the rod on here. Also, you need to get the height right. So I'm using a couple of these uh, adjustable parallel clamping blocks from my uh, machine kit. Then we put the scales on here and then the rod goes on there. But before we do that, we need to mark the scales out. End plate located and secured so that we can locate the connecting rod on the scales in the same position to within reasonable accuracy we will mark the scales out like so Let's get that a bit more aggressive there. That should do the trick. Trim pin installed. And here it is. All those bits and pieces put together. Right? Now you can see how it all works. Yes, it's simple, but there are a few cardinal rules you must be aware of. Leveling screw installed. Now let's take a look at the rod from a lower angle. First, make sure that when you put it on this hanger here that the split line is exactly as far as you can see in the middle of this rod of this uh, bar here also make sure that the rod centers are level this rods parallel here so we can get this level right and then lastly make sure you have located this right in the middle of the the um, uh, scale We need to have this cotton cord perfectly vertical in this plane and that one, right? So I can see it slightly off here. The way to do that is to mark a, a, a vertical line on the wall behind or get a large square or something like that and align it up. Now this alignment is pretty critical. So let me see how that's looking there. That looks pretty good. And we also need to get the center line of the rod horizontal. As it happens, this rod has a parallel beam, so we can just get this bit here level, right? Lastly, the rod must contact the patch on the scales exactly in the middle of that cross. Maybe a little difficult to see, but the reality is, is on an accurate high dollar machine, this small end weighed out at 156.4, so we are within 0.4 of a gram. Well, there you have it. That's the simple way of doing it. Now, I have to tell you, in all fairness, it's a bit finicky. You have to get everything right. That has to be vertical, both planes. The rod has to be in the middle of that there, has to go on the same spot here. Do that and you can get these rod balancing within about a half a gram, right? Now, if we made a little fixture to go on here that hung the little end, we could get it even closer than that. But 
This will get you by if you've got connecting rods which have the small ends within one gram and the big ends within one gram, you're doing fine. Here it is, ready to go. Any ideas what it does yet? Well, here's our setup revealed. Yes, it's a rod balancer. Now, how does it work? Well, that should be pretty obvious from just looking at it. What you have to do here is mount the rods on the uh, um, mounting shaft and uh, clamp them so that the bar and the rods are at a uniform level. Right, so when you put the rods onto the fixture, the bar is virtually horizontal. Now you'll see that I've got the rods drooping down. That is to make the balancing a little easier. It is just too sensitive to do them with the rods horizontal. Uh, with the setup we've got here, we can balance these uh, little ends to within about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a gram. Now, we have to get everything horizontal. Uh, that is the height of the each small end must be the same. The easiest way to do that, uh, to check the balance, is to line it up with a background straight line and get each of the little ends, the, the pin ends, the same distance from that line. You'll see the fixtures cocked off at a slight angle. That is to pull the left hand rod slightly further away from the background and move the right hand rod slightly near the background uh, at the pin ends so that we have an equal distance. Here's your first move. Locate the rods on the large diameter mandrel Place that on the bench like this and let the rods droop down. Put on the washer and tighten the nut. The mandrel size is slightly smaller than the bore of the rod, so that's not what's holding them. There's about a thousandth clearance. It's this washer here and that nut which clamps them, right? The other thing you have to do, and I'll have to turn it around to show you this, is you need to get this pin here in relation to the rods as near horizontal as you can. Next we put that on our uh, balance fixture. Now I haven't touched these scat rods, this is how they came. You can see they're very very close to being balanced as far as the pin end goes. But anyway, if one of them's heavy, and we'll say that ends heavy, it will tip, right? Uh, and if the other end's heavy, now we'll move this pin slightly here, right? Because it's got a little extra weight on there. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a minuscule amount of clay on, about a quarter of a gram, and we'll see how much it moves. See, it moved about an eighth of an inch. Now, if you've got this on a surface plate and you can get both of those level, you can actually see, you get them level with this pin here, how much one of them's out of balance with the other. First off, you put the pin in, find out where the whole lot balances, put a little scribe line on, and then that's the position of the pin. Then you put your rods on, and the idea of having them droop down is that they're stable enough for you to be able to just make minute changes. Anyway, that's how that works. Now, if when you come to balance the pin end, you use the inner diameter of this here. That big mandrel comes off. So let me just run that by you. And what you see here is the way the big ends are balanced. It's just a question of taking the large diameter sleeve off the, uh, the uh, axle of the uh, um, location roller and uh, you're in good shape. 
I'm not sure these scat rods were a good uh, idea to use in, as an example, as they're very finely balanced as you get them from scat. But again, let me try dropping a little bit of clay on there and see how much it moves. Well, now let's try this end. Right, you can see, well, I hope you can see that this is now closer to the bench than there. Right, so they are accurate. Doing it this way, if you're very careful, you can get both the pin end and the big, big end as close as 0.2 of a gram. That'd be plus or minus. So you will have some very precisely balanced rods. Now the thing is, is you won't know what the weights are here, but they will all weigh the same, small end and big end. So that's my um, rundown on comp cams uh, rod balancers. So if you want to know more about it, just go to compcams.com and uh, you can find out uh, all about it there. Take a look at what we're doing here and you will see that the top of each rod is exactly in line with this background here. That means that they're in the right position to be balanced. Now what about this pin? What do we do with that? This pin is here to balance the roller assembly, the mounting assembly, prior to putting the rods on. Right? You'll notice that uh, it's slightly off to one side, but that's because there's a little knob on one end and not the other. So how sensitive is this little device? Well, to show that, I put balanced it out by putting two 12 thousandths feeler gauges underneath the end there. We can see that anywhere we put this, it stays there, no matter what orientation it is. So it's not going anywhere. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change those two feeler gauges, 12 thousand ones, for two 10 thousandths feeler gauges. Okay, I want you to watch this carefully, right? I'm going to place this roller just here. Let it go. Now you see, just with two thousandths slope on a distance of three and a half inches, it rolled. We can calculate how much force is generated by that, that uh, 2,000 rise. So I'm going to do that, so just sit back and wait until I've got that done. Well, that's about it for what I have to say on how to balance the rods. Now, back in the day when small block Chevy rods were not that good in the pink rod was the only option that you had. Um, I used to look for rods which had the smallest balance pads on. This meant the metal was somewhere else in the rod. Now there were lots of techniques for getting these rods to uh, survive at higher RPM. And I suppose we used to get away with turning them as high as 8,000 RPM, but that was with a lot of work in. If it's a road race deal, then 7,000 RPM rev limit for, say, a couple of hours was about it, right? And you could end up with a broken rod. We are so much better off these days with the uh, powder metallurgy Chevy rod. That's, uh, that powder metallurgy deal was pioneered by Porsche, and they've all got powdered rods in their engines, right? So... Uh, I guess if it's good enough for Porsche, it's probably good enough for our small block Chevys. Anyway, they do well uh, in terms of where you can remove metal and things like that to balance them. You can get a very good set of rods out of uh, the later um, roller cam block rods than the early rods. And here's something else you might want to consider. 
Although those stock rods come with a press fit, there is no need to bush them. All you've got to do is have the pin ends honed out to about a thou to a thou and a half clearance uh, in them, and then make sure that when you uh, run oil in the engine, you run some oil extreme. Oil extreme will lubricate a steel on steel uh, situation with less wear than steel on bronze. Many of the high performance motorcycles these days, uh, including some of the ones that are the top racing ones, have rods that are steel on steel. So there's another option for you to consider. Anyway, talking about options, let's see how you feel about hitting that like button and subscribing. Yes, it's an option you have. And it's one we'd like you to exercise in a positive manner because it makes it more possible for us to do our online videos just like this. Thank you for watching.